Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Geek Speech broadcast. I have got another recorder and I have a lot of enthusiasm. I'm going to make one video per day within the month of July. I'm trying to keep this promise to you and to myself, especially since YouTube has allowed videos that are longer than 15 minutes, so it's much more easier for me to record. So I am going to talk today about control theory. Now you should be doing this in your third year or second year of your undergraduate studies. I'm not so sure I've done it in the third year for the first time and I absolutely hated it because I they didn't like the way I was I was taught. Um, basically, I didn't know where all this stuff came from. So you you might have seen, for example, uh, this function here: g of s equals one over s plus one, s plus two, and they might have told you that this is actually the transfer function of a system like this: u of s enters, you have g of s, and you have y of s, which is the output. Um, so what are these things? What is this S? What is this U? What is this Y? What is this G? And why do I end up with a fraction like this? And what is the connection between these function and the real world? For example, um, let's take an easy example, shall we? Let's say I want to control my car. So I am driving, so I'm actually going to draw here let's see if I can use my I have a tablet so I don't draw so nothing comes out of it so I think I will use the mouse in the end yeah I think I have to drag no it doesn't work so I might as well use the mouse so this is the line I'm trying to go from point E to point B here and this is my car. I'm going to draw here something really I'm gonna write the car. I'm gonna make some wheels. So you know it's a car. So I'm trying to drive from point A to point B. This is my girlfriend's house, let's say, and um what am I interested? What am I interested in? I am interested in the space, which I'm going to call S from space, obviously. So I want to go, for example, from coordinate 0, move through space, and go to coordinate B. Now the problem is, if I could control the space, so if I would have, for example, a machine, uh, so I could teleport from point A to point B, there then will be absolutely no need for control science, because I could basically control the 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 output I am interested in. However, it doesn't work like that. So what what do you do in real life? In real life you control the speed, right? You just look at the speed, which I'm going to call let's say V and you control the speed and you go faster. Um, you start from a speed equal zero and then you get to a certain cruise speed and then you keep that speed then you reduce the speed to zero if for example somebody tries to uh, cross your path here at a moment in time so if somebody tries to cross your path here the speed reduces to zero and so on and so forth so you just work with the speed but actually if you think about it you don't even have the power you are a very limited human being you don't even have the power to control the speed so what are you actually controlling um, if you think about it you're actually controlling the acceleration which I'm going to call a so you are controlling the acceleration and you are trying to um, you know put more gas put less gas and try to get to your girlfriend's um, house in the end. Okay, so let's just look at some graphs and see what's happening here. So I'm just going to uh, delete everything here, there, this one too. This one doesn't work. I'm just going to delete the drawings and I'm just going to draw again some graphs. So let's say this is your control signal. This is time t 
and this is the acceleration. You put more gas or less gas. What happens to the speed? And what happens to the space? And I will delete, um, delete also this drawing. Picasso would not be proud of me. So let's quickly look what happens with the space. So again, I'm trying to go on this line from A to B. I'm, I'm don't, I don't go left, I don't go right, I could add more complexity to the problem, but I don't. Now, if, this, if my acceleration is zero and I start from speed zero, everything is like, you know, static. But I want to start going, so I'm raising the acceleration. Let's say I'm raising the acceleration linearly. Now, uh, what does the speed do? Well, the speed, how, how does it increase? It increases quadratically. Now, if you remember, acceleration is v dot. v dot means the derivative of v in respect to time. So dv dot dt. If you don't know what derivatives are, this is not for you. Maybe it's 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 too advanced, but it, it should be straightforward. So derivative is the change, the change in speed. If the change in speed is linear, it means that the speed actually has a quadratic variation. If the change in speed would be a quadratic, this would be like a cubic. If the acceleration would be constant, then the speed grows steadily and at a point you are satisfied with uh, the um, with the speed you have and you go back to zero now you still have some acceleration on this portion so the speed still increases slightly up to a point and here you just keep it to a constant value the acceleration is zero now the thing in real life the acceleration is never zero because you just push your push your foot on the uh, on the pedal you just uh, uh, lift your foot off the pedal so you're actually doing something like this you are um, trying to keep the acceleration at zero in order to maintain a constant speed and so does the speed but the variation is minimal so what happens with the space so we have a huge increase in space um, let's say like this and as the speed is constant say like this and as the speed is constant the space starts growing you know, at, at a constant angle so it's a nice line here I'm not gonna say linear because linear is something else and I will tell you later what linear means okay so what happens if um, again somebody crosses my path here somebody crosses my path I immediately break my speed drops down to zero space stagnates space cannot drop space oh I guess I'm, I have a negative speed I start going backwards space cannot drop so I would be at the same coordinate let's say here so this thing the acceleration influence this which influence influences space so I am hitting the space with my control signal which this is this is the only thing I can control I can only control how much gas I deliver to the engine or how much gas I don't deliver to the engine so this is how I'm hitting the space I'm hitting the space with the acceleration so it, it's it's actually quite intricate you can imagine that for example when flying an airplane you have um, you you don't only control how much gas you 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 put to the engine you have you have the flaps you have all, all, all these degrees of freedom they are called all these variables that that you can change you have control upon and there are so many parameters that you need to take care of in, in, in order to ensure that you do not crash mid-flight so it's the fact that you want to go from A to B you have to control all other tiny things that you can control in order to be able to modify the, the, 
the variables you're actually interested in. Like now, you are modifying the acceleration in order to hit the space, to modify the space. Now, how are you, for example, at a moment in time, um, how do I know everything about the system, about my car? Let's say girlfriend calls you and she wants to know where you are and you are here and the girlfriend calls you and you, you tell her, you can either tell her, okay, the distance towards you is this one or let's say the distance from my home is this one. So you tell her the space and you could be, for example, um, stopped you are waiting for a large group of kids to cross the road or there's been there's a roadblock ahead there's an accident and your speed is zero or you are going on cruise speed and you'll be there on time so if you know where you are and what speed you have at that moment in time you basically know everything about the system and then you modify the speed with the acceleration and with the speed you modify also the space so For example, it's not the same thing if you are here and you are stopping and waiting for uh, for pedestrians to pass, or if you are here and you are just accelerating and, and running like a madman. Um, if you think about it, it's it's not so. It's if you if you want to build a car that drives by itself, this is how you would have to formalize it in order to be able to develop a mathematical algorithm for that car to drive by itself. The car should be able to um, ideally, so okay, this is my this is my, okay, now let's we have seen, we have defined the problem and this is a control problem. I need to wiggle this input around in order to be able to control the space because in the end what I'm interested in is reach this level on the axis let's say here on the space axis where my girlfriend where my girlfriend's house is okay so this is called the control control signal because it's a signal if you look at it so control signal it's it's not only one value it's a whole signal throughout the road that you need to do you, you you went from home then you you just settled your speed your cruise speed and then you're just trying to maintain and then you stop and then you uh, you try to uh, you raise the speed up again these two values that completely describe your system from what you are interested from the point of view that you are interested they are called the SMV, so SMV here, they are called the uh, state of the system. This is bad. Okay, I'm just gonna add some tabs. Never mind, this is just awful. Oh my god, what I have done here. So I'm gonna just call this the state. So these two variables form the state this is the control signal and S is also the output okay so how do I formalize this how do I um, again write a mathematical equation that uh, tells me um, so this is this is where this the, the box comes in so let's just say the box so my problem, so how do I formalize my problem? Let's see first the problem. My problem is the following. I have here a box, which is my system. And at a given of moment in time, I have some uh, space that I drove and the speed. I'm feeding this system, I'm feeding it gas, I'm feeding it acceleration, A. And I'm getting space this is what I'm interested in I have to reach my destination so the problem is what control signal should I insert here in order to reach my destination I don't know as fast as possible uh, in a given amount of time for example imagine that 
this is more complicated. You need to reach from A to B in a particular time. You know, you have a rocket, and you need to hit an airplane. You have a cruising system for an airplane. Uh, also, uh, you have a um, uh, you have an airplane that need, needs to reach uh, A uh, from A to B at a particular time because that's when he is scheduled to land, not not faster, not earlier. Uh, also, there can be different rules. You you might not want to exceed the speed so you might also be interested in the speed you want to keep it under a constant level there are very few situations in real life when you're only interested in one variable so this is um, this is the problem and this is called I told you you these are called X and it's usually X1, X2, X3, X4 and this is called Y. So remember this U control signal X state of the system and I'm going to write them again U I'm going to delete this so control state and output good so if you, I want you to be familiar until next time, U, X, Y. I think you also have seen it in class, uh, U, X, Y, U, X, Y. So now I will tell you how you can write, um, I mean, all these laws here, all that you see here, which is intuitive, uh, how you can write in a formal, one single formal equation that then you can use... Um, to um, you know, to do, to analyze it, to to determine this control signal in order, I don't know, for a car to drive itself or whatever you, whatever fancy stuff you want to do. You can you can formalize, you can formalize the system, and write one equation and take all the complexity you can have here. You can imagine that you have. Um, I don't know, acceleration, um, steering angle, uh, you can define brake as a separate control, uh, you can also have um, uh, I don't know how uh, that, that there's a, like a dynamic uh, braking system um, ABS or I'm not sure, don't quote me on that um, then there are there are many different variables you can have the temperature of the engine because you if you have passed a particular temperature of the engine you're about to explode you need to slow down obviously also the fuel level maybe you want to minimize the amount of fuel that you have until you reach your destination uh, maybe you want to minimize the amount of time there are so many variables but all of them can be hidden all this complexity can be hidden can be embedded into one simple equation and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in the next mini lecture just keep in mind that when you're driving a car you're actually um, controlling a system and it's very hard to control exactly the variable you're interested in you see you have to go from the acceleration to the speed to, to, to S and if you want to be really formal about it, you're not even controlling the acceleration, you're controlling the amount of gas. And there is a physical process that makes the connection between the amount of gas you're feeding the engine and the acceleration. You're going through all these physical like derivatives and, and, and integrants in order to reach your, um, your variable of choice. Okay, so I'll see you uh, guys next time with uh, the, um, that fancy equation that describes basically the states state of the the state of the state of the system it's called the state space formulation okay see you